Good morning. Good morning. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Uh, we are going to have blood drive will be here this coming Tuesday from 1 until 6. At about 3 o'clock, we're going to have a meeting with a young woman who we've talked to about being the uh, secretary here and helping us to uh, reach out toward uh, some of the younger folks in our community. Is that Tuesday? Yes. Yes. It'll be in the after, during the blood drive. Okay. Okay. And... Uh, Next Saturday, let's see, something's happening next weekend. What is happening? What's on the back of the bulletin? Lunch after church on Sunday. Lunch after church on Sunday, and we will be having a meeting dealing with just searching for ideas of moving forward. Kind of continue our uh, meetings on visioning for the future that we had, uh, I believe, last fall. So any other announcements? Any uh, anything? How did we do yesterday or Saturday, Friday and Saturday? Go ahead. Um, I, I think Richard came up with all the bills paid. We made a little over three hundred dollars. All right. That's what the bills paid. So and we're selling. Don't think without a full sausage. Okay. And, and, and then the other thing with that, we had the toy sausage that we to the top of the river. We had them in the freezer and we used them for the fall fest also. We we're we're paying money ahead on the fall fest. All festival. right. So, and then the other thing with that though, well, we did not make tons and tons of money. It was a good community service, I think. So it was great to be out there. We were here. Here. Yes, we were. And thank you to all the women, primarily women, Bob and I so sorry. I saw you all, there. For, for all the work they've been into this. All right. All right. Anything else that needs to be brought up and shared with the community? Oh, good. Here comes Joan. Very good. All right. My friends. Would you please stand as you are able and join with me in our opening hymn, All Creatures of Our God and King, number 62. <laughs> Thank you. 
May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all today and always. Holiness, word, power. You reveal yourself as one God in three persons, a mighty, creative, life-generating dancer who invites your creation to join you. Catch us up in your love and lead us into your world to call others to follow you with singing and rejoicing. Amen. Please be seated, my friends. So today is Trinity Sunday, and uh, we celebrate the concept of the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Okay. Creation displays the glory of God, but our sin keeps us from rejoicing in the love God reveals. Yet Christ Jesus, the Son, carried our sin to the cross, and the Holy Spirit breathes new life into us so that we can praise God, our Maker, Savior, and life-giving lover. Let us confess our sins that we may receive such grace. Would you please join with me in our prayer of confession? Presence, life, fire, God who is three in one, we confess that we have turned away from you. We gaze upon ourselves as if we are worthy of worship. We take your creation into our hands, not to love, but to use and then to discard. We go to the people of the land, not to serve, but to press them into your service. We do not deserve that you would even notice us, but we pray for mercy because you are merciful. Flame of love, purify us from sin. Eternal now, lead us to your truth. Risen One, baptize us into union with you. Transform us into faithful disciples who worship you alone. God who is Trinity, amen. The Holy One of Israel, the Redeemer of all the world, and the Holy Spirit who comes as the breath of new life, forgets the sin of all who repent. I declare to you, therefore, that you are forgiven. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, Mother of us all. Amen. You know, have you ever thought about sin, really? I, uh, when, when we begin this journey rather typically, we're talking, uh, we're told that sin is kind of our personal conduct, you know, uh, you do this, don't do that, do this, don't do that. But maybe what if sin is the shortcomings and the times that we could be open to God, but are not. In other words, what I'm, what I'm saying is, maybe it's more about this relationship that God offers us that we don't return the love. We don't respond. It's more of that kind of thing. You know, I mean, let's be honest, almost all of us, but one or two are old enough where not sinning in that old way is pretty easy at this point in life, right? All I have to do is not get angry at my car anymore. If I can do that, I'm good, pretty good to go. But do I wake up every morning with a prayer of thanksgiving for another day? Do I, or you, I'm, I'm actually inviting you into this, not telling you my story necessarily. What do we do to stay connected and not Trying to stay connected may be what sin is at this season of life. Just a thought. Just a thought. All right. 
Jesus sends his disciples into the world to bless all by his grace and with God's love in the Holy Spirit. Let us make this our offering to God. All righty. Wait till I'm done, okay? <laughs> all right, Ken. For all that you have given us, we thank you, Lord. For day and night, evening and morning, for land and sea, for fish and birds, plants and animals, for humankind, and for your Son who came among us with the gift of life abundant. Let your Holy Spirit abide in our midst and work through our gifts that all people may have joy and peace. In the name of Christ Jesus our Lord, amen. Okay. Really tired this morning. 
morning. So they're in where it's good and cool. So it, it, it was tough. She said it was tough on them to be out like that. Um, and then Lynn and Linda um, are up visiting her sister. Hasn't, it's kind of going downhill. So this may be the last time that Linda gets to see her sister, who kind of was her mother figure for so long. So but we, we keep those in our prayers. Yeah, well, number one, Benny's upcoming surgery. Hope, hopefully, it'll go through this week. <laughs> For her, uh, my nephew's father, my nephew, his father-in-law uh, had another MRI, and the news was not good. So they need continued prayer because the father-in-law being weaker and weaker. Then I have a close friend. This is hard. I got to shoot it real close to my wife. But um, they just found out cancer. She has lymphoma throughout her body. She's got a heart condition. She's at the Northwestern. They are starting chemo. But with her other condition, they got to really monitor things and they need to do things fast. So, fresh for her, her family, and the doctors. Or the university. Sing unto our ears, O Spirit, the holy word of life. Tell us who we are and to whom we belong, so that we may live with gratitude for all that you have done. Amen. Our uh, New Testament reading this morning is from 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 1 through 13. Finally, brothers and sisters, farewell. Put things in order, listen to my appeal, agree with one another, live in peace, and the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. My friends, would you join with me in our first, uh, our first hymn, For the Beauty of the Earth, number 92.
freely, number 389. The, the, the church just, the 
emerged and almost exploded. When you hear the stories like the, the Pentecost story that they had last week, you know, 300 people were baptized. There was large, and it was just large numbers that were responding to this incredible love that God has for humanity that we see through Jesus Christ. It's his teachings that tell us the very nature of God and for herself. So, here we are 2,000 years later. 2,000 years later, and uh, where are we? What's our commission? Like it was to these disciples. No one in the world make disciples baptizing them, teaching them everything I have commanded you, and I am with you always to the end of the world. Yeah, they're uh... 
that follow the rhythm of life when they have weight. And we're stuck with it. A lot of it. We've just always done it like that. Here's the message. And the message is, maybe it's time that we need to begin to rethink some of the things that we do. I believe God is alive and well in our time of history. I believe that we live in a culture that is deeply wounded. Just, frankly, just like that early Methodist movement or the church movement in the 1700s. You know what happened in the 1700s? It was the beginning of the, of the uh, Industrial Revolution. The Industrial Revolution, the people were moving from the farms into the towns where the jobs were, right? And they also learned how to distill alcohol instead of just fermented alcohol. Alcoholism was running around. Families were falling apart because they were moving. Some of this sounds familiar. If you look at our culture today, it might be drugs. It might be a, we got a myriad of things that we could be addicted to that are not positive things in our lives. And our families are moving everywhere. You know, one of our stories that we're going to tell here is going to be about families, you know, the, the next generation, well, they're a couple hundred miles away or a thousand miles away. We go where the jobs are. So that's the world we live in. It was a world that was very similar to the 1700s. You know, America was begun. The church began to have great influence. Well, how can we go and find some of those good folks that are living in our community? I, uh, Marla has a wonderful story she told a couple of weeks ago. And I have kind of a similar story. I, I, didn't, I didn't have a chance to ask you if I could tell your story. But, uh, so when I, you know, I was almost 50 years old when I went to ministry. So I have a whole other story that I like to kind of kill. I can tell you about sin, you know? <laughs> I know a little bit about that. That was some of that sin I was talking about the our behavior. Never mind. So, I remember, uh, I went to, I was uh, in my late 40s when I went to San Antonio uh, to work as a salesman. And I was a good salesman. I was the right person at the right time at the right place. And I was on my path to make my $100,000, $150,000 a year and live that financially comfortable life for the rest of my life. When the company I was bought got, or that I worked for got, Bought up by one of the world's largest corporations that trust me when I tell you the world changed, it changed for all of us, not just for all So anyway, here's my point. I was hustling. Some candy for fun, you see. By the time you get to about the end of October and you have just gone a full throttle for, for about three months, you get, you get exhausted. And I talked to my pastor one Sunday, and I said, I, I just, I need to talk. Can I come and talk to you? So the only time it was available on his very busy calendar was late on a Friday afternoon. And I went ahead and I, and I talked and shared my story. And I'm rather certain I used the colorful language on more than one occasion. At one point, he took me behind. Beyond. The guy just yawned at me. When I, you know, I had issues that I needed to share. Beyond. I never went back to church for another year. And saw. One day, I was calling on the school where I had some customers. And it turned out one of the customers was a member of this church that I had gone to. He invited me to come to Sunday school. I had a part of this with Sunday school. So I realized how important that sense of community, 
prepared for. And I found this to be a very focused on the song. And that bought Marley and Rich into the environment where they too began to build relationships. I think that's what it was. You know, I say to you Sunday after Sunday, it's this relationship that God offers us through Christ Jesus that brings us peace. Relationship. And then we allow that relationship to be pulled out on the people around us. We stop. And who cares? And then they can become involved. And those are the same place. I am really rejoicing in the last couple of days. Laura, our grandmother, has been, there have been times she has been so willing. I've uh, thought a good deal. I'm, uh, I'm so glad that this little guy is here, six years old. He's been here for, with us on Sundays for several years now. And in my mind, I've wondered, how can I share this mysterious story of an unseen God who blesses us, changes our lives, loves us. How can I? And I'm, I kind of, honestly, I'm, I'm not quite sure. I'm, I'm an old person. I think old thoughts and I'm, you know, how do I just show love? And then we have this meal. You know, it's, it's a spiritual meal that bonds us with people like ourselves who have somehow found in this mystery that we call God or Christ Jesus, have found peace, hope. And uh, I think that's it. It's a spiritual meal. God feeds, you know, every day we have a meal where we, our body is fed. But this is a meal where our souls, our spirit is fed. And we can be incredibly grateful that there were men and women, brothers and sisters, just like ourselves, who passed that uh, story of faith on from one generation to another, they found this sacred meal to remind them of the love of God found through Christ Jesus. And I kept bringing them back. Thank you, Lord God. It bonds us with each other. It bonds us with people across the entire world that speak different languages, have different cultures, but somehow I found in Jesus the gift of life. So my friends, will you please join with me in our liturgy? 
May the Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. 